love from love, hope from hope, peace from peace. It came about that Christ was speaking a blessing over the wedding participants at Cana. It was one of his first times stepping up to the plate and uh, saying a few words to uh, uh, honor someone else. Uh, because if you don't give it away, that's what it's all about. So he wanted to bless them. So he began giving his personal blessings uh, to Nathaniel and Ruth uh, at that uh, wedding in Cana. And that son of man seemingly looked right into each of their souls as he proclaimed that they should know that the greatest heights of love divine are only gained by any of those who reach the greatest depths of joy within such a, a godly type of love. And he then urged them both to press him towards some higher spiritual things in a time to come until the milk of the spirit was finally replaced by meat. It was time for the meat of love. Then he promised them both that they would also come to see that meaningful tears can only flow from hearts of flesh that don't seek to be self-serving in any way. Lastly, he blessed them by explaining that marriage should always be between a man and a woman who by perfect love and sympathy are united as one flesh, and that while love and life do last, perfect freedom will always flow over such sanctified unions which he shall protect with a hedge around them. So Jesus then encouraged them in the ways of selfishness um, and selflessness. <laughs> yeah, he wouldn't have encouraged them in selfishness. Wixing my words, but he did additionally strive to uh, keep them um, a blessing of help for one of other. And he told them that each of them should truly try to love the other in purity and not for worldly advantage or the mentality of keeping up with others uh, because such thinking is always of the world. That uh, in a marriage, even sex is not the end of that story and uh, because it should transcend far beyond the, any carnal Therefore, he wound up his speech by saying that divorce should never happen. And he told them that all, uh, he told them all that he would rather see the stars falling from the sky than for any broken marriage to ever be permissible. Adding that divorce was only permitted under the law of Moses because of the hardness of people's hearts. And he said that anyone who could grasp his, his teaching should grasp it very tightly. and But just before he waved the priest over to give his blessing, the Lord then made it really clear that wisdom about marriage will only exist where knowledge and truth bears fruit and where the laws of God are both followed and respected. Moreover, Christ then announced that all of God's children should understand well that earth and all that dwells within it is but a reflection of the kingdom of his Father of lights and the blessing that is called life. But insofar as uh, his disciples were concerned, they felt that he should have told them that the wonder of earth's truest truth greatly reflects his magnificence always, far beyond infinity. Christ's very last words were ones of sound advice. So it came to pass that Jesus then stepped away from the front of those people and he suddenly proclaimed several more well wishes by saying this. He said, may the Lord's face shine upon your love and may it grow strong. But rather unexpectedly, that son of Mary uh, then did a quick pivot and he turned back to the broom and uh, the bride and groom one very last time for a few more uh, down to earth thoughts. So after he turned, he then said, uh, figuratively speaking, that even though marriages are made in heaven, its maintenance has to be done on earth so that the souls 
merging in matrimony would also merge in oneness. But then Christ uh, cautioned them and said, but understand as well that both thunder and lightning were also created in heaven. And yet all of earth cowers as the great destructiveness uh, of such can all of a sudden come forth amidst a storm's brightest and loudest thunder flashes, said he. So it was a heartfelt message and they were definitely being touched by it. Therefore, the Lord told them and, and said this, But you will feel no rain, he prophesied, for each of you will be as shelter for the other. You will also feel no cold in your life together, for you'll be uh, warmth unto one another. Nor shall ye have loneliness, prophesied, said he, for each of you shall be companion to the other. You are now two persons, but there is only one life before you. So may beauty surround you both in the journey ahead, and all through the years may happiness be both of your companions in the oneness of the sanctity of your marriage, and may your days together be good and long upon the earth. And he said, then together you will find that laughter is like a, a, a broom which sweeps away the cobwebs of your hearts. So may your last kisses, therefore, be years from now, as you both taste of one another's lips. For marriage is a holy blessing designed by our Most High God. Further, our Lord stressed that marital love really isn't just sweet talks about flowers. Rather, such love instead is all about compromising and forgiving. So Jesus gave some very sweet words to live by. And Jesus emphasized the truth as the truth as well, that if it's not a lack of love, uh, it's not a lack of love, but a lack of friendship that causes unhappy marriages. And so the Lord turned to them most solemnly with a most special smile, smiled he, and he said this in parting. He said, Verily I say unto all who will wed, let there be spaces in your togetherness. Uh, and he voiced the words of Cahill Gabran. And he said, And let the winds of the heavens dance between you. Love one another, but make not a bond of love. Let it rather be a moving sea between the shores of your souls. Fill each other's cup, but drink not from one cup. Give one another your bread, but eat not from the same loaf. Sing and dance together and be joyous, but let each one of you be alone, even as the strings of a lute uh, are alone, even though they quiver with the same music. So give your hearts, but not unto each other's keeping, for only the hand of life can contain your hearts. And as your marriage prospers under God's eyes, stand together, and yet not too near together. For the pillars of a temple stand apart, and the oak and the cypress grow not in each other's uh, shadow. And that was a blessed word of blessing for all that will tie the knot of holy matrimony.